Wow, it's nice to be here. What an electric weekend and what a privilege it has been to uh, journey through this with each of you in this room. Um, when I was at school, I wanted to be rich. I wanted to have a big black car with big black rooms and, and a big boombox inside and a big house with a white picket fence and I wanted a trophy wife and life would have been awesome. Um, <laughs> And then I learned that there were poor people in the world and things kind of started to change for me just a little bit. Since then, I've been on this journey uh, exploring the world. Uh, I've had the opportunity to work with one, young people here in New Zealand, young people around the world. I've walked with the poor. I've got a sense of what that feels like in its most extreme situations, uh, and it's pretty full on. Um, I started studying out of school at the University of Life. I worked for four years and then I stumbled into a job with World Vision, which I'm currently doing today and I love. And my days at the moment are spent getting alongside young Kiwi power movers, helping them to make power moves that will echo, echo across our globe and create massive impact for the world's poor. And one of the most important things that I've realized through that journey is that at the end of the day, whether it's you and I or our brothers across the world, we are but one family, we are one world, we're humanity, yeah? We are all brothers and sisters, we're all connected through this common thing that is love. And as I think about the future, I think that hope is one of the most important things we can carry with us. But if we get serious for a second, where is hope to be found in a world when actually today, despite all of our advances and all of our progress, every seven seconds we lose one of our brothers and sisters to this thing called hunger? Maybe hope is to be found in the fact that 20 years ago, that number equated to 40,000 a day. 20 years later, today, that number is nearly halved to 22,000. Maybe that's where hope lies. But behind these numbers and these statistics, it's important to recognize that these are all people. These are all beings. These are brothers and sisters as complex and beautiful as you and I. So where is hope to be found in the darkest places? Where is hope to be found for the 300,000 children who are currently living this day as a child soldier? Where is hope to be found for the 25,000 children who are abducted by warlord Joseph Kony in Uganda, abducted from their families and communities in the most horrendous, brutal violence? Boys turned into child soldiers, girls turned into sex slaves. Where is hope to be found for them? Where is the sense of expectation and trust for the future? So years go by and, and maybe hope lies in the chance of escape. And thousands of these children, now young adults, are escaping. But they're returning to their communities broken. Immense psychological trauma, physical trauma, loss of schooling. Where is the future for them? What gives me hope is knowing that even in these places, organizations like World Vision are working. There is a center called the Gulu Center which works on the initial rehabilitation and reintegration of former child soldiers, helping them deal with what they've gone through, helping them with livelihoods and income that will push them into the future. Maybe that is where hope lies. Maybe that in the darkest places is where hope can be found. This sort of support that's being done is helping people like our brother Eric up here. Eric's showing a picture, a timeline of his life. Above the line is hope and light and below the line is despair. At the age of five, he experienced pain when he lost a member of his family. And then later on, it goes downhill again and that's when he was abducted. And he journeys through life and he almost goes off the charts, but then he escapes and then he marks today that he stands in a World Vision Rehabilitation Center as his most hopeful, lightest part of his life yet, today, because of that. Now, I'm not trying to say that that comes down to any organization. That's not what I believe it is. I believe that essence of life that he's talking about there is actually more than an organization. It's a vision shared by a movement of people who choose to extend their love across oceans and continents to our brothers and sisters to journey with them from the deepest, darkest places into light. That essence, that spiritual transformation is probably best described as Manawa 
order. That is a breath of life. It's that same breath that we've all felt just pumping and pulsing through our veins over the course of this weekend. It's that same essence of life that I, will, that I believe transforms not only the darkest and damaged souls on our planet, but can overcome the most significant problems that unfortunately our generation is currently facing. So here's what I want to say to each and every one of you in this room, 400 young innovators, dreamers, leaders, activists, change makers, that when you leave these four walls and you step out into the big wide world where maybe the buzz isn't quite the same as, as, as it is in here, take, take that electric essence, take that breath of life. As you go out and do things and create stuff, never underestimate the essence that is within us that can spark fires in our neighbours and our brothers and our sisters. Take that back to your communities and let those flames in your being spark embers in your neighbours and your communities and fuel that fire and let that fire, fire blaze out of control so it goes beyond borders and races and cultures and religions and sexual orientation in days gone by. Let that fire blaze so bright that it could even overcome the most lofty, lofty walls of oppression and injustice and violence and ignorance and apathy and let us all shine each day as we go beyond these four walls brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and let us light even the darkest nooks and crannies of this beautiful place that we call planet earth and we will be part of the generation that turns our future into that big just sustainable kick-ass party we want it to be. And that is what I want to say to you today. Thank you very much. <laughs>